Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary and today I'm taking a short pause from my high-end dollar dupe series to bring you eight quick and easy hacks to transform regular Dollar Tree planners and other Dollar Tree and household items into fabulous planners with a high-end look. I will return next week with another Dollar Dupe video from a high-end retailer that will also link the playlist here and in the description if you'd like to catch up on the videos published thus far. Plus, if you're looking for planner ideas, there's at least one planner DIY in each of the videos. But for now, let's check out some Dollar Tree planters, and they have really stepped up their game this year. They have larger planters like these, smaller planters with attached saucers, and even architectural style planters. These are all pretty nice looking as is, but I think we can take them up a notch with a few easy tricks you can use on planters like these, or with ones you may already have and want to upcycle. In addition, I'll be using some non-planter Dollar Tree items and recyclables to create four more planters. I'm going to start with a large plastic planter with the embossed pattern, and I'm going to be painting it with some off-white craft paint that I've diluted with a little bit of water. I'm going to paint the entire surface of the planter, making sure to get into all those little nooks and crannies. For the very bottom, I do want to keep that in the taupe color, so I am removing any paint that gets on that section. And then once the entire surface is covered, I will set it aside for a few minutes to dry. And then once the paint was dry, I went back with some sandpaper. And now what I'm doing here is I'm going to be sanding off the paint, but just there on the raised portion of the embossed pattern so that I'm just removing the paint there on the pieces where the pattern raises up. And then you can see how it creates a really neat design on the planter. And I'll do that all the way around, also along the rim as well. And then here you can see the before and after. And although the Dollar Tree planter was quite nice, as is, you can see with just that five to 10 minute process of applying the paint and then taking it off again with some sandpaper really brings the whole planter up to a whole nother level. These little architectural style planters are a super buy at a buck, but I think we can make them look closer to the real thing just by adding a little bit of texture. So to do that, I'm going to be painting with my favorite paint, spackle paint, where I mix one part of chalk paint, this time the color mineral, and one part of spackle, mix them together. I'm also going to be adding a little water to improve the paint consistency, and also to be able to get the paint into the lines and crevices so as to keep the design intact. Now, since the surface of this planner is covered with a design, and since even on the flat parts, the surface does have some texture, and because I'm painting with this chalk paint spackle mixture, I'm going to go ahead and start painting directly onto the planter. However, in other parts of this video, you'll see me prepping the surfaces differently, and it may be confusing as to why I'm doing it in one case and not in the other, but the reason is that it all depends on the surface, the type of plastic, the type of paint I'm using, and what type of finish I'm trying to achieve. So this combination of surface type, plastic type, paint, and desired finish, I'm good to go and paint straight on the planter, and I'm going to be painting a total of three coats. When painting my third coat, I did decide to add a little bit more texture. And I did that by just kind of pouncing the brush uh, all along the surface, just giving that little extra bit of texture to the finish. And then here you can see the before and after and how even though the Dollar Tree original is quite nice and gives a great architectural vibe, the addition of some texture with the spackle paint gave the planner just that little extra something to make it look more like the real thing. Next up is this cute little saucer planner, and this is a great example of what I mean by the different types of plastics. In addition to not having any design on it, it's also made of a very shiny smooth plastic, which will definitely require some sanding before painting. And since I'm going to be finishing the two pieces differently, I just separated the two by popping the saucer right off the bottom. And now I'll sand down both surfaces as well as the top edge of the inside of the pot.
To paint the pot, I'm going to be again using the spackle paint mixture in the ratio of one uh, part paint to one part spackle. This time I'm using the color plaster from Waverly. I'm also diluting the paint with a little bit of water to make it easier to paint with. And I will again be doing three coats of this paint on the pot. For the base, I'm going to be painting with just regular chalk paint, no spackle, and I'm going to be painting with Waverly hazelnut colored paint, and I'll paint the entire base with that color. Then I'm going to take some of the antique wax from Waverly, and also a chip brush from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to just dry brush on the wax to create a wood grain look to the base. And then I just went back and finished off that top one inch portion of the pot. And then here you can see the before and after. And I am just loving how this one came out. This is definitely one of my favorites. And it's a wonderful high-end upgrade for the price of a Dollar Tree container, some paint, and some spackle. Now on the other hand, this one. Now this one, well, let's just see how it came out. So I started with this uh, beautiful container from the Dollar Tree. And again, it was made of that nice shiny plastic. So I made sure to get some sandpaper and give it a good once over all over the surface. Now I thought I had seen something similar to this in Lowe's and I thought, oh, this would be so pretty to just add some of the glass beads to the top. And I got those, of course, at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to attach them with some E6000 and a little dot of hot glue in the middle. Otherwise, that E6000, those beads will be slipping and sliding all over the place. But the hot glue will hold it in place. And I just attach those all the way around the top rim. And then I wanted to do that kind of ceramic glazed pottery look. And so uh, what I did was I took some cherry red paint and then that's Mod Podge in the middle and some brown craft paint on the other side. And the first coat I'm doing is the cherry red and Mod Podge mixture. And I'm painting it on in this streaky fashion, trying to let parts of the original red of the uh, container kind of poke through. And I'll cover the entire container with this first layer like this. Next, I did the brown paint and Mod Podge mixture, and that's just regular brown craft paint. And what I'm doing uh, is starting there at the top and just kind of painting little dashes and strokes uh, with the brown craft paint and Mod Podge mixture, kind of just making little downward peaks into the red, going all along the top rim and then I went back to the glass beads with the brown paint mixture and just began painting around the beads and then down below the beads in a type of teardrop shape and just kind of blending the uh, brown paint in. And I did that for each one of the little glass beads. And at this stage is where I probably should have left well enough alone. Um, I continued to go on beyond this with the brown paint, kind of adding it to the lower portions of the pot. And I don't know, you guys let me know. I'm thinking that at this stage, it does kind of look like the ceramic glazed pot that I was going for. But then I kind of take it a little bit overboard once I start doing this business down here, adding a little bit too much of the brown paint, I think. Uh, kind of create it more of a tie-dye look as you'll see in a second. So here it is. I think I went a little overboard. But live and learn. Sometimes less is more. Nonetheless, I went ahead and sprayed it with a high gloss glaze. And then here you can see the before and after. And actually, I'm liking the before better. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments. But um, yeah, not the ceramic glaze look I was going for. Not even maybe the tie-dye look I was trying to sell, but uh, maybe it's more like got splattered with a dirt bike look, not sure. But I think the technique has potential and we just might see this again in a future video. And now moving on to our non-planter planter items. How cute is this adorable Easter basket from Dollar Tree? 
And um, after today, everything will be 50% off. And so you can see how cute it is with all this little detailing. And then also these Easter stamps. I'm going to just use those as legs and just attach those with some E6000 glue. And then I went back with some of this dark copper spray paint and sprayed the whole piece. And this is how it came out. Super easy. And then all I wanted to do as well was add a little black craft paint to accentuate some of that detailing. And I just went around with a little makeup sponge also on the legs and around the bottom of the basket. And now here you can see the before and after. And I'm just loving how this all came together. What a great high-end look for just a few dollars. And if you purchase the items after season, it's even cheaper. And I think the little feet, that really takes it over the top. Adding feet just seems to increase that cuteness quotient exponentially. For the next planter, I'm going to be recycling this hot cocoa canister. And I'm also going to be covering it with this burlap uh, messenger bag from Dollar Tree. But the burlap is a little thin, so uh, the red on the canister bleeds through. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint it with some hazelnut colored chalk paint. Then I was proceeding with this orange messenger bag and my intention was to cover the orange, trace over it with a black marker, eh, but then the red or the orange color was really bleeding through and although the same happened with the blue, it was less noticeable. So I did decide to switch over to the blue colored bag and uh, the next step was to just remove the strap there at the top. Next, I wanted to cut off the portion where the Velcro clasp is on the bag. This part was a little bulky and it really wasn't working with the project. So I just cut off that entire top piece. Next, I cut off the bottom of the bag and then I took the entire piece and measured it up against the canister. And so since it had that middle spiral design, I kind of wanted to center that on the can and then I just marked where to cut accordingly. Next, I just used some tight bond glue along the top and bottom of the canister. And then I just took that piece of burlap bag and slid it right onto the container. Now it is a little bit of a snug fit, which is nice because it does give a nice finish effect. To finish off the top and bottom, I again took some of the uh, tight bond glue, just added it there to the top, and then I took a piece of the strap and just glued it right there in place along the top of the can, and then repeated the process for the bottom. If you like the blue or the orange for that matter, uh, this next step is not necessary, but I did want mine to have a black or blackish finish. So I went ahead with a black paint marker and just retraced the design uh, covering the blue with the black marker. Hey. 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 Lastly, I just trimmed off the top pieces with some scissors. And then here you can see the before and after, a cute little boho style planter made from a recycled hot cocoa can and a burlap bag from the Dollar Tree. Next up is another recycled materials planter, this time using milk cartons and a Dollar Tree placemat. And so what I'm doing here is just cutting the placemat in half. Just so happens that the pattern splits evenly right there down the center. Uh, you can get the design going uh, one way with the uh, black arrows pointing down. And then I'll be making a second planter with the black arrows pointing up. And then I'll use the placemat itself to mark where I want to cut the milk carton. And then I'll use a utility knife to cut the milk carton down to size. And then since the milk cartons do have a waxy coating on them, I am going to take some sandpaper and just sand the surface down a little bit to create a nice surface for the paint. And then I'm going to go ahead and spray them with some of this ultra matte black spray paint. 
To attach the placemats, I'm going to first use some hot glue. And so I'll take one strip and again, I'm going to put one of the black arrows going up, the other one going down. And so I'll just start along that back crease with some hot glue, put a strip of it down the back of the milk carton, and then just attach the one side of the placemat. Next, I'm going to take some of the triple thick glue and I'm going to just paint it on. Now I did dilute this a little bit. And so I'm going to just paint it on all along the sides of the milk carton and then wrap the placemat around, attaching it to the sides of the carton. And then once I get back around to that back end, I'll again use a strip of hot glue to secure the two pieces together. And then here is the before and after. And these are great because you not only get one, but two beautiful modern looking planters. And they're pretty much costing the price of the placemat plus the cost of paint and glue. For the last planter, I'm going to be using one of these acrylic bowls from the Dollar Tree, as well as some of the Dollar Tree beads. And I'm also going to be sanding the surface to prepare it for paint. Then I'm going to take the beads, and these are kind of the larger beads that come in the package, and just attach those to the bottom using some E6000 glue. Once the glue was dry, it was time to paint, and I again made a spackle paint mixture using the plaster colored chalk paint from Waverly and then also spackle from the Dollar Tree in a one to one ratio. And again, added a little water so that it would make it easier to paint with. And I did paint the entire piece, including the beads, and I did apply three coats of the spackle paint. And then once all my base coats were on and dry, I did go back with some brown craft paint to create some accenting detail. And so using a makeup sponge, I just on a very dry sponge, so I pretty much take put the paint on and then take it right off so that I have very little paint on the sponge. And I'm just gently going along the ribbing on the bowl and just dabbing the paint ever so lightly on those ribs. And then once all the ribs were done, I went back along the top as well, and then also did some accenting there along the bottom, and then a little touch there on the feet as well. And then here you can see the before and after, and this planter makes a great option for a succulent garden. Those are so popular these days and those containers are extremely expensive. So, and the succulents too for that matter, but nonetheless, this makes a great option. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this Dollar Tree Planters DIY Hacks video. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a big thumbs up and please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. If you would like to see even more planter ideas, don't forget to check out the options in the high-end decor Dollar Tree dupe series, which I will link here and in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.